You're in for a treat today, because we're covering yet another metro scheme, this time in the West Midlands. Stay tuned. West Midlands Metro is a light rail system that has been running for more than two decades now in the West Midlands. It plans to increase its exposure for the cities across the West Midlands, including Birmingham, Solihull and Wolverhampton, just to name a few. It originally opened in 1999 as the Midland Metro. This was a light rail system, or tram to me and you, on a single route conveniently called Line 1. It runs between Birmingham Snow Hill Station and Wolverhampton, a city about 18 miles northwest of Birmingham. It ran along the old alignment of the Birmingham Snow Hill to Wolverhampton Low Level Line, which closed in 1992 meaning it reintroduced rail services to sizewood set destinations such as West Bromwich and Tipton. Now, in all honesty, I didn't have a clue a tram ran between the two cities, especially considering that both stations are connected via the rail network with pretty frequent services between the two cities. But, as the years went by, two extensions followed. One was in late 2015-2016, where the line was extended across Birmingham city centre, down Bill Street and across Corporation Street as far as Birmingham New Street Station. And a couple years later, in December 2019, Fram now terminated at Century Square, all known as Library, where there's been a huge amount of redevelopment, including the iconic Birmingham Library, hence the stop name. The trams used to use these old school T69s, yet I've done my research and these things ran from 1999 to 2015. And based on the colour scheme, you could not miss it. And just like the Pendolino trains, they all, or most of them, have their own names, based on what I believe are iconic people from the Midlands. Although, I can't say I know any personally. Anyway, these slowly got replaced by 21 Urbo Freeze, which were built by the Spanish company called CAF. And these are one of the bidders for the rolling stock of HS2, if you want to go check that video out. But this isn't what this video is about. We're not here to talk about the past, but more what's happening in the future, specifically the plans of the West Midlands Metro. Well, considering it's a metro, it's rather bare with just one line, so expansion is the key. And six of them are planned. Well, in all honesty, the first one wasn't even an extension, but more an upgrade at Bilston Road, and this was a 2.7 km of track upgrade along the existing roadway at the Wolverhampton end of the line, and was completed in 2019. The second expansion was officially titled the Birmingham West Side Metro Expansion, which extends from Grand Central to Ebbiston Park. I've probably pronounced that wrong. But this is partially complete, with Phase 1 opening from Grand Central, where New Street Station is, to Library in December 2019. Phase 2, which is currently being worked on now, will extend a further 1.35 kilometers, with intermediate stops at Brindley Place and Five Ways. This is expected to open in late 2021, with any luck. The service frequency is expected to be every 6 minutes during peak time with 8 minutes off peak, so pretty good. The third expansion is the Birmingham East Side Metro expansion, and this is planned to run 1.7 km east from Bull Street to a new terminus at High Street Derrit End. Derrit End? How do you even pronounce that? Anyway, the scheme includes 4 additional metros at Albert Street, New Canal Street and Meridian Street. This is planned to open in 2021 and will go under the HS2 Curzon Street station. So we might have to wait a little bit longer. There are also tons of reports out there about the environmental statement, other assessments, even the urban design strategies, which you can have a read of and I'll put the link down below. This leads us nicely onto the fourth expansion, which is from East Birmingham, namely the extension we just mentioned, to Solihull and the interchange station at HS2. It aims to revamp the whole of East Birmingham and allow people to reach the NEC and Birmingham International Airport a bit bigger and will be a huge catalyst for HS2. Now, the actual route hasn't been confirmed, 
but a business case was submitted in 2018 spring, and it just essentially justified the funding. Uh, so my provisional route is along here, and there are references to these places in the report. However, next steps are route design, public consultation, and the preparation of the planning application. Oh, and the money, of course. The fifth extension is due to open a few years from now, in 2023, and will cost £450 million, and will link 11 kilometres between Wenensbury and Brearley Hill, and it looks like it's been planned and all that's left to do is construct it. This creates 17 new stations on the network, connecting large areas of Dudley, which were previously connected, with an old rail alignment which used to connect Oxford, Worcester and Wolverhampton together. It's commonly known as the South Staffordshire Line, so there is a nice green strip which the route is currently planned to utilise. The consultation document suggests that journey times will be 40 minutes from Dudley to Birmingham, 30 minutes from Wolves to Dudley, and 53 minutes from Brearley Hill to Birmingham. And this could possibly encourage 2,000 new homes and over 30,000 new jobs. And it's expected to begin passenger operation in 2023. The last extension is probably the smallest and is focused around Wolverhampton, the northern end of the current line. There is only one station at St George's, but there are plans to extend it to the main national rail station with a stop at Piper's Row. While small, it just creates an easy link for people with the big change being the redevelopment of Wolverhampton station. From what I understand, this is happening as we speak and will coincide with the station upgrade that happened last year. It's expected to open in late 2021, so with any luck, you might be seeing it soon. So we know what's happening, and there's five out of the six having funding already secured. So now we just need to understand who it's being planned by and what the next steps are. So let me explain that this is a little complicated. The West Midlands Combined Authority set up the Midlands Metro Alliance in 2017. So hang on, who are these groups? Well, the West Midland Combined Authority is essentially the overarching regional authority for the West Midlands County area and works with lots of local authorities and other partners, one of which is called the Midland Metro Alliance. And this partner is a consortium of several other smaller firms, including design experts, rail specialists, as well as other firms and even sub firms. Anyway, the system is operated through the Midland Railway Limited Company, who are owned by Transport for West Midlands, who is, in turn, a body of the West Midlands Combined Authority. And they also work with the Midlands Metro Alliance. I hope I haven't lost you, but this plan always ends up going back to political objectives. Now, whilst this is all tram-based, this is only the first step. Some political leaders have tweeted this map, the West Midlands Metro and Rail by 2040. Personally, I think it's a little deceptive, as more than half of these already exist as rail networks. Oh, and there's the 15 billion price tag to it. But you can judge that how you will. End of the day, there's six extensions which will have a huge impact to the West Midlands, five of which are already happening and can truly show what the West Midlands Metro is capable of. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.